told Harpo to beat me. All my life, I had to fight. I had to fight my daddy. I had to fight my uncles. I had to fight my brothers. Girl, child ain't safe in a family man's. But I ain't never thought I had to fight in my own house. I love Harpo. God knows I do. But I kill him dead for I let him be. The Foolishness of Harpo and Oprah, Sophia. The Color Purple. Welcome to Manosphere Highlights Daily. The movie The Color Purple, released in 1985, provoked constant controversy, debate and appraisals of its effects on the image of black people in the US. Black men protested because there is literally no quote-unquote good black man in this movie that plays a significant role. He understands why black men react negatively to The Color Purple. They know that they get more than their share of negative imagery uh, in movies, uh, on TV, uh, that they're portrayed uh, in some way as, as losers, brutal, buffoons. In this video, we want to highlight the dynamics between Harpo and Sophia and take what we can learn from it. Shout out to the Patreon gang! Salute! The original video is gonna be on Patreon because we have to respect the YouTube guidelines. That's why you will get a censored and filtered YouTube friendly version. So if you like what we do, and do you want to experience our content to the fullest extent, support us on Patreon. This video contains a lot of spoilers, so you've been warned. Now it's time for us to dive into this and do what we have to do. Because we men and we... We men and we... Hey, Harbo! Hey! Harpo is clearly a weakling, he has no backbone, and this buffoonery is common in movies these days. Just watch Netflix and you can't miss it. Now look at this scene right here. Dear God, Harpo be in love with a girl called Sophia, and she be a big girl. Mr. Say he wanna have a look at her. I see them coming way up the road. They just be marching, like going to war. This is why we love movies so much. The exaggeration is over 9,000! This scene says a lot about the dynamics between Harpo and Sophia. Harpo is a follower, a beta male. Sophia is the masculine one and is wearing the pants in the relationship. Harpo cannot do any better because he's a boneless chicken. Most women are not interested in Harpo and most men are not interested in Sophia. A fat woman with a jacked up attitude. But Harpo is exactly Sophia's type. Look at this next scene. Paul, this here is Sophia. Sophia, that's a pretty name, huh? Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. Harpo, I was gonna get married. Looks like you got yourself in trouble. No, sir, I ain't in no trouble. Big though. Who the daddy? Harpo. How he know that? He know cause he's the only one. <laughs> you clearly see who's wearing the pants in this movie. It's very clear that Harpo's father, Mr. Albert Johnson, did a terrible job raising him to become a man. He clearly knows his son is in trouble. He's asking an interesting question. Who's the daddy? And how we know that? There were no DNA tests back then. And that is what marriage's primary purpose was. To bind women to men and guarantee that a man's children were truly his biological heirs. All that love and romance came later. Couples were brought together for practical reasons. And I'll come back to that later. Young women no good these days. Got their legs open for every Tom, Dick and Harper. <laughs> Young women are no good these days and they got their legs open for every Tom, Dick and Harpo. <laughs> the film is currently set in 1915-1920 and a hundred years later, 2021, Young women have their legs open for every Chad and Tyrone. <laughs> it only got worse for the black family. Children out of wedlock, all time high. Single motherhood, all time high. The majority of black women are fat like Oprah in this movie. 
The split, the gap between black men and black women is too big to close that only a catastrophe at this point can bring us back together. And let me tell you something, prepare yourself because this catastrophe is around the corner. No need to think I'm gonna let my boy marry you just cause you in the family way. Ain't cold enough. He young and limited. Pretty gal like you can put anything over on him. See the look on her face? She's like, I'm not gonna do that. You don't need to get to know a woman for years to know what type of woman you're dealing with. This is the look that black women will give you when they hear the word submission. They think about this movie. <laughs> you have to understand, this movie was big when it came out in 1985. And it did exactly what it needed to do. Push that agenda. What I need to marry Harper for he living here with you? What food and clothes he get? You buy. Because I know your daddy throwed you out. Ready to live in the street, I guess. No, sir. I ain't living in no streets. I'm living with my sister and her husband, and they say I can live with them for the rest of my life if I want to. I don't need you and nobody else to tell me to take care of myself. My baby. I can take care of my baby all by myself for nice business. No, you stay right here, Harpo. When you free, me and the baby be waiting. Say whatever you want about Harpo, but he's dealing with a woman that is not here to cooperate with him, her father, or anyone else. It's gonna be her way or the highway. Check this out. Miss Millie always going on over the cup. Ooh, your children are so clean. Would you like to work for me? Be my maid? Hell no. What did you say? Hell no. What did she say? Hey, can't you pump that crude a little faster? Gail, what did you say to Miss Millie? I said, hell. <gasps> There's a difference between being brave and being foolish. When a soldier is behind enemy lines and the circumstances are not in his advantage, it's not smart to provoke the enemy. And then double down on it, triple down on it. And when the enemy attacks, you engage in a full-fledged battle. You can't win and lose a lot more than your life in the process. Oh, Miss Sophia. No, Miss Sophia, no! When Sophia gets out of prison, it will be around 1935. You have to understand that these were horrible times for black people to act foolishly. Take a look at this article. Prosecutor defense lynching of two boys as will of the people. Wouldn't call them a mob, he says of Texans, who executed Negroes for attack on girl. Judge calls hangings justice. On November 12, 1935, two teenage black boys, 15-year-old Ernest Collins and 16-year-old Benny Mitchell, were killed in Colorado County, Texas, in a public spectacle lynching committed by a mob of at least 700 white men and women. Afterward, officials called the lynching quote-unquote justice, and no one in the mob was punished. In October 1935, a young white woman's body was found in a creek near her family's farm in Columbus, Texas. When local officials concluded she has been murdered, suspicion soon focused on Ernest Collins and Benny Mitchell, two black teens who had been seen picking pecans near the same creek. During this era, the deep racial hostility that permeated Southern society burdened black people with a presumption of guilt that often served to focus suspicion on black communities after a crime was discovered, whether evidence supported that suspicion or not. Teenage boys, without evidence, without a fair trial, murdered in cold blood. This would continue for a long time. 20 years later, 1955, Emmett Till, a 14-year-old boy was murdered in cold blood, not just black men but black boys were also going through hell. So the last thing that you need is a woman that doesn't understand what's going on and is not willing to cooperate with you for the better. 
In this movie, they blame Sofia's actions on Harpo. And they're gonna turn out a heap better than these fools you never tried to raise. Now, now hold on here. No, hold on, Harpo. If you hadn't tried to rule over Sofia, white folks never would have got her. And that's a lot. Now, that's a lot! The foolishness. And this is why women are shocked when they hear what we have to say in the manosphere, when we hold them accountable for their actions. Women are so used to blaming everything on men and getting away with it that when they hear men present legitimate arguments to prove their case, it is mind-boggling to them. And that's why the manosphere is growing, because what we say makes sense and is backed up with evidence. How much proof do you need? It's not our responsibility to protect women that do not respect us. Women who deliberately treat us with disrespect and act a fool in public, leading to unnecessary drama with the expectations that men are gonna be there to sacrifice their lives for this foolishness. Now Celia is talking about Harpo trying to rule over Sophia. Check this out. Harpo? Harpo! I won't. I will. I will. I do. I do. I do. Now, Sophia. Do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband, that you will love, honor, and cherish him, and that forsaking all others for him alone, you will perform unto him all the duties that a wife owes to her husband. You will perform unto him all the duties that a wife owes to her husband. You will perform unto him all the duties that a wife owes to her husband. Until God by death shall separate you. I do. <laughs> A Christian wife has a specific role in her marriage. The reason Sophia happily says I do is because she gets married for the wrong reasons. You want to get married because you want to wear that white dress. You want to get married because you want a wedding. In 1920, you didn't have Instagram, otherwise you would be marrying to splash all of your wedding pictures on social media. You don't want to be a wife, especially not the wife described in the Bible. Let's read. What should be the wife's role in marriage? 1. Be a helper to your husband. While all of us are called to be helpers to others, the Bible places a special emphasis on this responsibility for wives. Genesis tells us that God realized it wasn't good for man to be alone and that he decided to make a quote unquote helper suitable for him. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. It is interesting to note that the Hebrew meaning of the word helper in this passage is found hereafter in the Bible to refer only to God as he helps us. The fact that the same word is applied to a wife signifies that we women have been given tremendous power for good in our husband's lives. God has designed wives to help their husbands become all that God intends them to be. Fellas, this is the standard. If a woman is not here to help you, then what's the use to have her as your wife? She! 2. Respect your husband. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, Paul says, The wife must respect her husband. When you respect your husband, you reference him, notice him, regard him, honor him, prefer him, and esteem him. It means valuing his opinion, admiring his wisdom and character, appreciating his commitment to you, and considering his needs and values. Please check out our How Much Proof Do You Need series and you will see how disrespectful women are these days. It's ridiculous. And that's why we teach you how to recognize these low-quality women and advise you not to disrespect yourself by entertaining these low-quality modern females. 3. Love your husband. Titus 2 verse 4 verse 4 calls for wives to love their husbands. A good description of the kind of love your husband needs is unconditional acceptance. In other words, accept your husband just as he is, an imperfect person. In modern times, the only thing that you have to do is sneeze the wrong way and it's all she wrote. 4. Submit to the leadership of your husband. Just mention the word submission and many women immediately become angry and even hostile. Please watch our video, Women Explain What It Means to Submit to a Man, where we dive deeper into the submission topic. Now what's mentioned in the Bible is considered abusive and controlling these days. Let's take a look at Harpo and Sophia's relationship. Harpo, come on down here. I need you to hold this baby. Mm -hmm. Let's keep yourself busy. I see you busy making a racket. Now come on down here. Now goddamn, Sophia. I come down when I get ready. Oh! I'll tell you the truth, it is. Lord, child, now see we gonna get your little milk here, baby. 
Little milk here for the baby. Yes, indeed. Here it is. Go to your daddy now. Go to what, your daddy. what you want me to do with it? Try feeding her and then try fixing up this here mess you done made here. I can smell the rain coming. Just in one scene, they show us that Sophia is not your traditional wife. Now we already knew that from watching the other scenes, right? But this is where the foolishness comes in. You ever hit her? No, sir. How you specter of mine? Why is this like children? Ask them know who got the upper hand. Nothing can do it better than a good sound beat. <sighs> Sophia thinks too much of herself. Needs to be taken down a peg or two. <laughs> Harper has no spine and his father has a lot to do with that. And now he asks his father for advice. And he's telling Harper to beat some sense into his wife. I agree that women are like children, but beating your wife is not going to do you any good because she already needs to know her role. And if she doesn't, you have no business marrying this liability. Some men just need to be left oh, alone yeah. sometimes. I need some eat. Pies in the pantry, just like women need to be left alone sometimes. That's why I tell Harpo, I hear fuss and does it all the time. Leave me alone. Ain't you gonna get it for me? Is there something the matter with you? Oh, that's my own baby crying. Lord, make yourself useful, Harpo. Hush now, What I'm gonna do about Sophia? This part confused me at first. Why would Celie give Harpo the advice to beat Sophia? According to the book, Celie was jealous of Sophia's ability to fight. But Celie might be onto something because she doesn't give her husband any trouble. It was that mule, Pa. Old Joy. The, 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 old Joy the mule. I tell you, I was out there trying to plow that north field. And the mule just went crazy. He started kicking and bucking, hitting it right there. Bust my eye, bust my lip. And yeah. that's a hoof print. Did you look like a hoof print that far? No, that looked like a fist print. Right? No, no, sir. No, sir. Ain't no fist touch my face. No, sir. Sophia doesn't make Harpo feel like a man. Because she does whatever she wants. Not being the wife as the Bible describes. And because he's weak and he can't even whoop her ass in a fight. <laughs> In modern day society, please walk away from this fellas. They will lock you up just for the idea of you hitting a woman. It's not worth it. <laughs> Sophia beat on Harpo. Then Harpo beat on Sophia. And then Sophia beat on Harpo some more. And then between the beatings, the children keep coming. And then one day, Sophia she just can't take it no more. It's good riddance. In the manosphere, you will hear phrases like, you can't make a 304 a housewife, or she belongs to the streets, and to the streets she will return. When a woman is a born-again virgin, run! Don't think because she put a ring on her finger and she says these vows at the altar, she will magically respect them doesn't work like that man just like this scene when she leaves she will take your children with her and you will have to pay to see them therefore you should not marry them because when you do don't be surprised when they resort to their default settings harpo should have listened to his father and shouldn't have married a woman he wanted to turn into something she's not and this fits dr maya angelou's quote perfectly and i quote when someone shows you who they are believe them the first time People know themselves much better than you do. That's why it's important to stop expecting them to be something other than who they are. End quote. That's a wrap for today, guys. Shout out to the Patreon gang. Salute! Manosphere, we working. This video has officially been highlighted. <laughs>